Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm actually going to be doing a scientific experiment um, because Dr Julie Dawn contacted me um, and she sent me some information so that I could actually share with you how this um, pattern would have been made in the Neolithic times. So um, we're on about 10,000 years ago, so this is our ancient ancestors and um, I did actually kind of upset her a little bit and I'm really sorry I didn't mean to do that um, because I actually said things like oven this is the oven it's actually technically called a clay pit okay so I will stand corrected on that and this is what it would look like this is a cross section from a link that she sent me to go and have a look at and they would have lit the fire in the bottom and it's all heated all the way around and um, these little flames coming out the top there so and that's essentially in um, layman's terms is how they would have cooked their pot but it's actually called firing okay so they fired their pots in a clay pit <laughs> um, and they're not yeah but if I'd have just said oh they fire the pots in a clay pit and you didn't see what a clay pit was some people would think firing like shooting a gun or something so we're just making it completely clear this is a clay pit which is the Neolithic version of a modern day oven okay and this image here is an image of this obviously somebody's finger but this part here is a bone tool which um the neolithic people would have carved out these little ends look these beautiful squares it doesn't say how they was able to make those squares so accurate and how they carved the bone tool so i'm sorry i can't share that kind of information um but Essentially, they use this tool, and so what they did is they, they put the tool in row by row um, in little groups and they made these. So, the dark areas I can't really see properly on my image the dark areas are made by that tool. Now, this is the bit where I don't think um, I was quite clear before it's not the dark bit that I was asking if it was crochet, it's the actual little lines that are the paler parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my scientific experiment. So obviously she's told me no, it wasn't crochet. But um, so I thought, well, we have to be fair with this one. So I've made up some of my modelling items, and I've got together some of my modelling tools. Now this square tool here, this one is obviously the nearest thing that's going to do is a square, but I can't. I, on there there's this like four in a row so mine's got to be done individually um and to try and create the little chain effect that i could see i've got my various tools this is the imitation of a shell and um this one here which uses this little tiny rounded end there it's like a, as a thing there and this bit here is because i wanted to show you something with a, a the, on a bigger scale so it's easier to see okay so to start off with, this this is this is just a modelling icing, but this is essentially um, it's got the same sort of consistency as clay. So when I get the square tool and I create, and I'm just pushing it in, um, then so there we go. So that's my row of four, which is like their their comb tool, yeah. So it's like it would have done four in a row. So I'm just going to then do another row directly underneath that there and another row underneath that and as you can see it makes this cross section now this is what I was on about it before is that it's in this raised up area where I can see what looks like a chain pattern and so it was how do you make that chain pattern in the raised area is what I was trying to find out so if I use this um, shell tool and push the shell into this, into the crosses, into the raised area, yeah, I will actually get holes. They don't look completely like a chain, but it does make, um, it makes a pretty effect, if nothing else. But it, I can't recreate the chain that I can see, and that's what I was... Oh, that was what was mystifying me was this um what appears to be a chain and as i obviously do that that's actually indenting that and making that and distorting it and if we go back to the image 
and have a look um, at the image here, we can see the lines are going across this way, but then there's a line going like diagonally across. And that's where I was thinking it was looking like it was wrapped up like a bandage. Um, and if we look down here, I don't know whether it's the angle of the part or whether it's the light, but these holes actually look smaller than these holes over here. So, oh, and by the way, Dr. Julie Dunn says that the actual pot is not actually blue, it's grey, okay? And the um, clay that it was made from was found 60 kilometres away from Wadi Ashoti. Even though I am correct that you can actually get blue clay from Wadi Ashoti, <laughs> um, it's wrong. I was wrong because it's actually grey. So, um, but brownie points for me for finding... Um, clay in the desert <laughs> by google um <laughs> right so what i'm going to do now is we've shown you how that you can make a pattern so what we want to do though is we want to try and with this crisscross um effect that we, so if i say imagine i've gone all the way around my part and i've gone up to daisy and sort of come up at the wrong angle i'm not coming straight anymore yeah what happens if i then start to do this do i um create an effect like on this on the pot um i'm gonna have to make some more squares down there i suppose to try and give it an equal chance of looking like it but we can actually create a diagonal going across and the straight lines there and then we can actually fill in with this shell tool and make little tiny holes into this bit as well yeah so um yeah, so we can see what's happening there okay now um as i'm doing it scientifically <laughs> here's another ball oh, let's, let's just leave that ball to one side right there right what i've done is i've actually got um this is one of my doilies i didn't make this doily this is one of my treasures that i've found which um i would love for a scientist <laughs> Or somebody else to try and actually verify what the actual stitch is because I'm mystified by this one. But because we've got this, um, we've got this little cross section here, um, and we've also got these um, like diamondy shapes there. But if you put it obviously, if you put it that way, we then form in some a form of the squares. It's not going to be exactly the same. So what I've thought is that also get my eyes in and. Um, we're going to I'm going to experiment with here and then I'm going to experiment with here so you can see what happens okay so if I press my um, my clay into that squared section yeah you can see we end up that we've got um, our squares but they're all raised okay and um, and I've got the pattern which actually I would say this isn't crochet anyway but it's actually giving me a very similar effect of using the shell tool and then I can actually go afterwards and then put the squares in afterwards and actually I can create a similar effect um, those lines obviously where I've indented there are going to be a lot clearer than this and I didn't push that in too hard so what we'll do is um, we can try it again so we can see if I press it harder, oh, that's nice. Look there, you can see all the effect there. Okay, and so when I then actually push in the squares here, there, we can actually get a very similar effect by actually using um, fabric as well. Um, but I say is is. Currently, I mean, it's not likely, really, is it, that you're going to find a um, 10,000-year-old piece of fabric because it's biodegradable. Um, but just, so we can actually, we can actually make it both ways, okay? So, um, but I say, it, it was the actual raised-up area which had the little markings in. If we go back to the actual picture and have a look at my picture, um, I say it's, it was the paler area which I can actually see what looks like, it still to me actually looks like chain work. I'm not going to deny it because it's not, I'm not, um, I mean, that's why I thought that I'd ask. So, and just so you can see 
um, because obviously those bits there are not they're not very um not very clear and everything's on a small scale so i'm going to do it all on a bigger scale i'm going to this is another piece of icing and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the icing onto here and there look at that yeah you've got fabulous effect and you can see all these little tiny ridges that this this chain is this is um like a twisted work um there and once again, this is why I've got the bigger tool out. I'll just push that over there a minute. And um, if we indent into those areas, yeah, say so this is just a rounded version. But we can actually still create um, any beautiful effects where you've got a pattern within the work which is still indented. But then it's actually raised up because you've actually pushed what were your I mean these are your holes effectively aren't they? But so we so you're pushing that those bits back in to then reform the holes to then leave the pattern of your work behind. So and it works also 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 if we um let's just do it I'm just gonna do it on the side if I if I get this one here then we have a look we've got that effect there if I then I need to twist it so it's diagonally twist it diagonally we can still get a diagonal and um because it's not all the same pattern it's not looking so good but you can actually get the lines coming across this way and going this way through both versions okay so we've got this version and this version so if I just get all these and push the squares in they're all in a little row so you can get a better effect Yeah, you can, you, that's what I'm saying, is you can actually um, make beautiful effects. That one actually looks like a golf ball, doesn't it? Doesn't like that. Um, but yeah, so you can actually um, make it both ways. So, um, scientifically, you can make it both ways. Logically, um, there's no evidence to say that there's actually any fabrics in that area or... Um, say the closest place they actually know of currently um, is um, Syria. But as the clay was found 60 kilometres away, there's nothing wrong with saying that people can travel and everything. So keeping an open mind, um, we can actually see that our Neolithic ancestors uh, with their ancient tools could make some really, really beautiful pottery. Um, and today... Those tools are now readily available in plastic for uh, using with food, like I have done here. So, um, I do hope that um, that Dr. Julie Dunn, I do hope you watch this video. I, I really, really, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I am trying to really genuinely see how our ancestors used to do things and the information is, is actually it's really hard to find because you know there is that many people out there that um, if you want to say for example you was looking up the pyramids right or uh, like me and um, when i was on about my, bl my blood, blood group before if you go and have a look for things like that you have got pages and pages and pages and pages of all these people with all their theories and also this this people like um Zachariah Sitchin, he was um, an archaeologist who then used um, stories that was a, that was around and then mixed them together to be able to create his own version. Yeah, and so it's really hard to sift through, especially when you've got what you think is somebody who is really believable because he's, 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 he is, he's done all his training to be an archaeologist. But then he mixed it with fantasy and so it made it really, really hard. And, and like I said, you know, searching through the internet is like searching through the desert. It's exactly the same equivalent, in my opinion. Um, and so I hope that you can see that my scientific experiment, I actually wasn't asking a silly question, really. You know, I was actually genuinely um, <laughs> quite serious. But um, yeah, so the answer is no from Dr. Julie Dawn, they weren't crocheting at that time. And the reason why she says that is because there's actually no physical evidence. A scientist can't um, 
they can't say to you, oh yes, there was, when they haven't actually got any evidence. They had evidence that they was using tools, but they didn't have any evidence to say that they was using any kind of fabric because the fabric's not being found. So, um, so those obviously then they get picked up like th by theory conspiracists and, and then change things. And now I wasn't trying to change anything. I personally, genuinely with a magn magnifying glass can see what I thought were chains in the raised up area of the crisscross pattern. So we just do it again, just to show you. It's the, there look, if we just do it with a plain tool, we get left with these raised up areas. Yeah, and it's the raised up area that I could say, oh, actually, I never tried it that way around, did I? Let's do the indents first and um, put it onto a bit of chain afterwards. I wonder what that would do. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> there you go then. <laughs> they definitely, definitely didn't put it into, fa into the fabric afterwards because I just lost all my holes. But, wow, that's quite pretty as well, actually. But there you go then. So, um, in the aid of science <laughs> and... Um, and yeah, I'm, I know, you know, it's like, I'm not, we have to take our archaeologists and our scientists very, very seriously, because they, they actually are very, very serious. And somebody like me who's got like a bit of a, I don't know, maybe a laid back kind of attitude towards things, because, probably because I've read so much rubbish, you know, and it's like, oh God, here we go again. Um, but um, actually, you know, I was genuinely, genuinely, really really being honest i wasn't trying to make out that anybody was a fool or an idiot or on it or mock any of their things by saying that you cook a pot in an oven it's just because that's a modern way of talking it's not i'm not a scientist so i don't speak in a scientific way um and i think it's because i actually am just a normal person that that's probably why um my viewers like me. <laughs> you know, I get loads and loads of lovely comments, and I'm so proud of what I've done. And I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to say I was wrong. If you don't ask, you don't know. You know, that's how I was raised anyway. And so, um, so yeah, so I've been cheeky, <laughs> been cheeky, um, probably in her opinion, when I actually wasn't being cheeky at all. Okay, so. Um, I hope you all like my experiment and I hope that, say, Dr. Julie likes my experiments as well because at least I've shown, you know, that it is possible to do it both ways. Um, I still can't work it out, though, which, well, how they made it look like a little chain. No, no matter how much I've tried, I can't make that, um, that actually happen. So um, maybe one day something will be found. Who knows? You know, they're still looking in the desert and I wish them all the very best in the desert. I hope you find some absolutely amazing, amazing treasures that will help to build up everything for... Um, and, and, and do you know what would actually be really nice? Is, do you know, like, with the, with the with the pottery, it's like if, if they used a particular style. So, say, for example, it had got this particular pattern on it. And you could say, oh, well, in this era, that's when they use this pattern. Yeah, and then in... The next era they use this pattern and so on and so forth it would it would really help and it would really help if we actually had um a really nice site that we could actually go and, and actually really say okay then th this is this is all scientific truth but then again they don't use the, they don't use normal <laughs> words do we I have, <clears throat> they have to translate everything um when they start talking it's like you know when i've, I've been i've been looking for lavender um and it's got um it's, it's got its own botanical name and things like that um the reason why actually it was on about the lavender is because you know this tool here I'm not showing you the medical square you, if you use a piece of lavender because a lavender stalk is square and so is a mint they don't have a round stalk they actually have a square stalk so it was just and um, that was something to do with me um with one of my other bits that i was researching so um so yeah so you've got 20 minutes worth of me waffling as i normally do because that is me and that's naturally me if you had a conversation with me 
um, person to person, you would have a conversation like you're having now. I don't change my voice, I don't put on a, a particular accent or anything else for my videos, I'm just me, okay? So, for all my viewers that I haven't put up a crochet video and have actually done a scientific experiment, I really hope that you've actually had a nice little change. Um, and so, um, I think it's been very interesting. I shall carry on my search and um, I will share my other treasures like this. this. This is one of my treasures. I know it's a piece of cloth, right, but, um, you know, Dr. Julie Dunn's treasures are um, little tiny bits of pottery that she finds um, in the desert and mine are things like this and um, I actually collect stones too because I've got all my fossils so um, I've got that link to the past that like and, and link to the future and so I'm just looking at things from a different angle I suppose is what I'm trying to say. So, thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for sharing, thank you for subscribing. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate all of you and bye for now.